Hey guys, it's System Coach, how are you guys doing? It's me, Johnny Sports, and welcome back to the Arsenal career mode. And today, boys, it is going to be the last episode, not of the series, obviously not, we are just halfway through the season, but the last episode before we get into the transfer window. I cannot wait to get in there, boys. Today, we will start off, though, with a reserves team match against Southampton. Then it will be a first team match against Liverpool. Then we will have a compilation of these two games. And then, finally, the transfer window doors will open up for Arsenal and for us to spend our money. So if you guys are looking forward to that, and if you guys are enjoying this series, like at any point so far, just go ahead, hit that like button. It doesn't cost you anything. It just shows me that you like the series. So just go ahead and do that. That'd be much appreciated, guys. If we could get to 2,500 likes, I might think of uploading another Arsenal career mode tomorrow. So let me just quickly get into this. We are doing well. Yes, last episode we did beat Newcastle. We are currently in the second position. If we do win our next game against Southampton right here with the reserves team, we will be back into the first spot. I think a draw would be enough as well. So let's keep that on, on our mind. But um, we have to get into the Arsenal Fan TV again. And as always, very entertaining stuff. Let's take a look at it straight away. Okay, so I get why people are saying that I shouldn't be included in the Arsenal Fan TV because by trade, I'm a Liverpool fan. I've been a long-time supporter, a long-time subscriber of Chani. I've followed him wherever he went, any job he took. I am a supporter of Chani Sports. Whatever he does, I support it. I try to help him as much as I can. I think I have as much as an opinion as any of y'all do. However, I do get why you wouldn't want me here. Uh, probably because I roast DK too much. No, but in, in all ser seriousness, um, I think I should be able to stay. I genuinely think he's making a good point. This series is not about just Arsenal fans. This series is about everyone that is watching it. And everyone deserves their opinion to be displayed on screen. So, that's why we will keep on putting players, uh, people onto the Snapchat part of the videos where... If they're not an Arsenal fan, it's still okay. You can give us your opinion and try and help out the team for the sake of the series. I think that's a good thing. I think fans other than Arsenal should be allowed on the Arsenal fan TV because if they talk sense, then let them be on there. Unlike that deluded guy with glasses, class and not just sent him in CDM. You mad? And it seems like this guy does agree with me as well, so... I guess we're making a point here. Please sign Isa to you from Toulouse. A great backup centre back. L loads of potential. French, young, he's the perfect fit for you. Amazing result against Newcastle. But we could have kept a clean sheet. But you're not off the hook yet. We still have the game against Southampton with the reserves teams, which is kind of working. For the transfers, I think your first option should be Naf and Ake and Upamecano because they're fast and they can help us in case the defence makes a mistake and we can chase after our opponents. So these two are talking about the transfer window. As you guys know, in the last episode, I asked you actually to vote, but I completely forgot to put the vote into the video. Uh, we will just try and get all of them and see which one I decide at the end of the day to bring in into our team. The ones that we are going for are Rugani, Vallejo, Kimpembe, Upamecano, De Ligt and Ake. Those are the centre-backs, the young centre-backs that we are trying to sign in this upcoming transfer window. And hopefully we'll be working out at least one of them has to join our team. Otherwise, we will have to look for alternatives and... I don't know if I have that many. I mean, this, these guys right here with the snaps obviously suggesting a couple. Malang Sar has been suggested a couple of times in a couple of snaps. So I appreciate all of you guys sending your snaps right there. And keep them coming. Keep those snaps coming if you want to be a part in this series. And if you want to be shown to millions of people, obviously. Not millions, but around 20k people every single time. 20,000, that's like a whole arena. And then here is obviously a video from sparring one of our true assistant coaches in this series 
Well, Chenny, what a wonderful result that was there against Newcastle. Good to see the team bounding together and getting an absolute display of pure professionalism. That is the kind of result that we expect as Arsenal fans, uh, just taking apart these mid-table teams. Now, uh, I know the transfer window is uh, rapidly approaching, and there's probably one thing that you have overlooked, and that is the amount of players that we have out on loan. Perhaps there is someone there like a Perez that you could bring back and possibly sell off to generate a bit more cash and if we do look at our reserves team our right back uh, backup is, is is very much lacking perhaps we could bring back the likes of Jenkinson or more maybe they would be able to do a better job for us uh, defensively help our squad depth and um, that is probably something that we need to look at moving forward so have a look at your loan spell players see if there's someone worth bringing back for the first team and maybe we can generate some cash that way good work Chani onwards and upwards onwards and upwards that is true my friend and you are actually right a lot of people have been talking about this lately in the comments as well they have been saying that players like lucas perez have been on loan and it could be quite good for us if we can bring them back into our team in order to make some money so let's check out who is the highest valued player that could come back into the team lucas perez 81 rated he goes for 15 million. We could possibly get like 18 million from a transfer of his into our team. And also, it would be making sense because we do need a backup striker right now for the reserves team. So, Lucas Perez, welcome back. Oh, nope. Okay, I don't have any money. Well, that's not happening. We have to wait until Koscielny has officially left. And then Lucas Perez can come back and then we can try and sell him on. Campbell, another player that we can sell on. Actually, someone that I do like, but I would rather have the 15 million if we can get it out of this transfer right there. That is another one that we have to recall. Asano, I think, is a good player, but I want to let him just grow at Stuttgart. I don't think he's someone that we should be selling on immediately. Jenkinson can come into the reserves team as a right back. Not really the best stats though, so let's just keep that in mind. Uh, Martinez right here, he is also out on loan, but these guys are not really worth that much. Obviously, the big ones are uh, Joe Campbell, uh, Joel Campbell, and then uh, Lucas Perez. Those ones will be returning back into the squad as soon as we get into January. Now, let's get straight into the games. We have a lot of games to play today, so let's do this. We are fighting for that first position with the reserves team. I know without Lautaro Martinez, it will be a tough task, but I do believe, I do believe. So let's make it happen. Players like Nelson, who can then come in into the second half, uh, they can have a big impact onto our team. We are one of the, to of the top scoring team in the league right now, and hopefully this reserves team can defend well and move forward quite nicely at the same time i don't have that much faith if i'm honest into into the finishing abilities of niketia but i'm hoping that Ivobi and, and guerrero can score some goals oh uh, well also our right back is quite terrible did i mention that already peter check good save straight away in the early minutes we do get a shot on our target and i nearly made another mistake straight after it and then he has been cr playing quite well what a pass from Niketia into Ivobi. Ivobi! No, how do you miss that? But still, what was that pass from the 62 rated striker? Mental. I should have finished that one properly. Another ball to make the Niles. Make the Niles will turn back inside. He's looking towards Jack Wilshire. At the far post, I see you there. Ivobi! Ivobi with the header. He's trying. Ooh, that was rough. That was rough. Maitland-Niles, come on, get that ball away, mate. Get that ball away, mate. Are you kidding me, man? What is this? Look at this. It's just terrible defending, and what a clearance that is from him. Just straight into our opponent, and it's a perfect bounce into Carillo, I believe. We're already 1-0 down against Southampton. I knew it was going to be a tough game, but I did start off quite nicely. All of a sudden, Southampton score. That could have been a good run there. Into Niketia. He's passing it through into Volby. What are you doing? Wilshire. Down the right. Here goes Ivobi. He has some space ahead of him now. Ivobi. Getting in there. Ivobi. Great turn. 
Come on, Niketia. You can finish it, Niketia. Yes, he has done it. It is 1 1. Southampton is uh, probably very surprised that this man that has missed one of the biggest misses. Uh, biggest chances that we had in this season if you guys remember he had one of the biggest chances which he missed in like the late minutes against one of our bigger opponents uh, he is putting it in from the same position where he missed the, the last time so I'm really happy that he has turned up right there in the absence of Lautaro Martinez we do need someone to do that big steal by Zelalem and here goes Ivobi again Ivobi is through again Last time he didn't score from here. This time he will pass it over to Rafa Guerrero. Nikitia. What? Oh, Guerrero. How can you not score that, man? Oh, I'm so upset. I should have scored there. Nelson is coming into the game. Willock is coming into the game for Zelalem. And I, I might try Dragomir. <laughs> what a name. Could be playing a couple of decent passes to just get through our defense. And that's exactly what they are doing. Carillo is now running through. Someone needs to stop them from doing exactly that. Taking shots. He's going through. Come on, Nelson. You have scored in the late minutes once. You can do it twice. Actually, no. Just pass it over. Get it up. Ref? Ref? That's a pen, ref. <laughs> Come on. It's a draw against Southampton. I thought we could be getting a penalty right there. But no, the ref just decided it's not happening. It will be a draw in the end. I don't know if that should have been a penalty, but there were like three players that actually took out Guerrero. Do we get a, a replay of that? No, sadly we don't. Guerrero hits the post, 90th minute he doesn't score. He will be apparently getting a 9.4 rating. All right then. Um, but Niketia, surprising performance. And I said a draw would probably be enough to get a, a back into the first position. So it might have been enough here. Okay, so how is it looking in the league? Manchester United, they have gotten yet another draw. They are struggling right now, as you can tell. Our goal difference is better than theirs. So a victory or a draw against Liverpool will see us back into the first position. Watford and Burnley in third and fourth. But Spurs and Chelsea are slowly picking up up on pace it's surprising though to see teams like Manchester City still down there we have played against them they had one of the best teams of the season and I have no idea how that is actually happening but it's not my problem I would have loved to fight against them for a title or something but yeah not happening on this game now we are playing against Liverpool we gotta focus on our players but also on to Sadio Mane, who is currently on top form. He has 11 goals, Aubameyang though on 10, and Lacazette on 9. So we are catching up to him, and this might be the game where some of our players might overtake him if we score enough. Last time we played against Liverpool, it was a 6-2 victory. So keep that in mind. Now it's time to to beat them. The good thing about this episode is mainly that we are actually playing a lot of games, but this is the most important one out of all of the games that we have ahead of us. Liverpool have to play in their weird kit. I, myself, as a Liverpool fan, I genuinely dislike that kit. I think it just looks terrible. Um, they should have done something better. Hopefully a better away kit next year, but uh, the orange one is doing quite well, <laughs> let's be honest. Arsenal, now one point is needed to regain the throne in the Premier League and Matip will try to stop Aubameyang and so on but let's see how that goes for him oh no I just completely messed up Granit Xhaka scored against us once and he was about to do it again I cannot allow that guy to score against us two times in a season Milinkovic Savic with his 99 shot power let's see what he can do here He's passing it over. Aubameyang. 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 <laughs> yes. Ward is messing it up right there. I personally thought that I messed it up. But Aubameyang has caught up to Sadio Mane. 11 goals this season. The same amount as the Liverpool left winger. But... Let's take a look at this replay right here. The Arsenal fans obviously very happy about that goal. Milinkovic Savic, great distribution of the ball, a great pass from Mikitarian, and a really good finish just below the keeper from Aubameyang. So after all, we gotta give him some praise right there. With his weak foot, what a finish. 11 goals, top scorer of the Premier League. Lajinat, come on. Granit, now down the right, he passes it straight into Mo Salah, and what a finish. 
What a finish, man. Mo Salah does what he does best. He already has 31 goals scored this season in real life. And uh, now he has put another one in against us. Arsenal's defense not looking too good. And Granit Xhaka yet again included in a goal that we concede. And what a finish that is. That's such a nice shot from him. Mo Salah, obviously, he was bound to score. So like I said, we didn't play against Liverpool um, with the sliders that we have right now. So they are definitely a tougher opponent. That was a finish worthy of a Salah though. Yes, Monreal. Come on, get to it. Great job, Monreal. Big steal. And now the counter-attack is on. Lacazette. Aubameyang. Aubameyang is through. Matip with a big mistake. Aubameyang. Yes, he will do it. Every day he will score for Arsenal. Now he is officially the top scorer of the Premier League. 12 goals for Aubameyang and Ward not looking too good yet again. Liverpool, as always, with goalkeeper problems. <coughs> Holy shit. <laughs> they're trying to kill me because I said the truth. Uh, and as you can tell, their third goalkeeper is actually playing right now. And that just tells me my, that Mignolet and uh, Karius apparently are not good enough. Aubameyang yet again scoring and Klopp is not happy. I am though. Mkhitaryan plays it back. Here goes Ozil. Ozil. He does see Lacazette right there waiting. He's just waiting. Lacazette could have gotten it back there. But now Ozil. Ozil. Oh, Danny Ward, what a save. I thought I could score from that position. Ooh, they do play it. And here's Milinkovic Savic. Ozil does see Lacazette in a good position right now. Aubameyang! Aubameyang! What is the defender doing? Why is he not moving towards him? Okay, that was an easy one. But Aubameyang scores a hat-trick against Liverpool. It's 3-1 in the 50th minute. And Ward is like, what are you doing? How are you defending? Look at this. I think it's Klavan. It is Klavan. Now I understand why he didn't get to the ball. I mean, look at this. He's just completely open after the drag back. What is this center back doing? Liverpool, you need to bring in Van Dijk into that starting lineup. What a turn that was. In the 72nd, they might actually find a way back into this game. I just ran completely past him. And of course, Granit Xhaka scores. Of course, it had to him. It had to be him. It had to be Granit Xhaka in front of the Arsenal fans. Everyone I sell scores against me. Let's make some changes though. 73rd minute. We want to keep this game as it is. I do want that victory. And Lenny is not coming in. Wilshere is coming in for Mikitarian to have a little bit more uh, support for the defense. And I think that's about it. I don't want to risk anything else, to be honest. But maybe Iwobi instead of Aubameyang, who's really tired, just to run forward. Let's try that. Mo Salah, big steal from Wilshere. Get it all. Get it all. Super sub. Yes. We have beaten Liverpool. I thought they could get back into it, but Guerrero with a run through their defense. They couldn't catch up. Players like Klavan cannot catch up to his pace when he comes into the game. Why was the man stuck like this? <laughs> Did you guys see him? Ivobi gets an assist, Guerrero scores, super subs, on fire. Liverpool is probably losing this match if I'm not terrible at this game. Oh. Roberto Firmino now in the game. What a pass. What a pass. And what am I doing? Alberto Moreno about to score against me. Oh, block! <laughs> How did he get to that one? That was very impressive. And Shaka was like, nah, man, sub me off. I'm not playing against all block. Yes, their keeper's out. Push, 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 push. Get that ball. Oh, no. Get it. Get it. Yes. Come on, Ramsey. You can do it, Ramsey. Aaron Ramsey from his own half. Oh, come on. I just want to score one of those again. Give me, give me, give me the ball. Let me score. Or thank you very much. Oh, the game is over. 4 2 against Liverpool. Not as good in, as the last time we played against them, which was a 6 2 victory, where they had a terrible lineup, I remember. But Aubameyang comes in in his tracksuit and he's picking up the ball after the game because he has been selected player of the match. Obviously, Mo Salah tried his best, but it wasn't enough. 
His defense wasn't good. They had Alberto Moreno, Matip, and Clavan in there. And yeah, it just isn't good enough. If you play with a defense like that against the best offense in the league right now, you don't stand a chance, even if Shaka scores, which really upsets me. We have one, four, two, three points back into the first position. So I just want to ask one question. And that question goes out to a specific team. Yo, Manchester United, how does it feel to be in the second position below Arsenal? Just let me know. Just let me know. 37 points on United, 39 though on Arsenal. But the better goal difference, of course. What is this? Now it's gone. Before the season started, I wouldn't have guessed that Aubameyang in 21 matches would have had 39 scorer points, which is incredible. Because at the start, the first couple of games I've played and also a couple of games that I've used him on Ultimate Team for, he was terrible on FIFA 18. Now though, I do see his finishing qualities. You just need to use him the right way and he will score goals for you. He has been doing a great job and three goals against Liverpool. That's something that a lot of people will be talking about in the future. So I'm happy. Aubameyang, great performance right there. But obviously, first position right now. Now the two games that you guys are looking forward to see. Because after those, we are finally getting into the transfer window. I cannot wait for that to happen. So uh, let's just go ahead and do this. Are you guys ready to smash some bad teams? I am. Crystal Palace will be a simulation because they are in the bottom three of the league. And we lost. And we got an injury. And we lost the first position. And we are now playing away against West Brom. Oh boy. This could be bad. And that was exactly what I was thinking. Because it started off exactly like I expected it to be. West Brom take the lead 1-0 and here we go though E4B he is going to be the savior of Arsenal not hitting the target properly uh yeah had to make some changes at least one good message Lautaro Martinez is back from his injury finally good messages and there though because we can see the second one yeah, but then it was time for the comeback in the 89th minute. It is Lautaro Martinez with the pass through into Rafael Guerrero. And from that one, we pick up the ball, we go to the midfield, and then we lay down the ball to start off another attack or just lose. Yeah, 2 1 West Brom. Nice. Hi. Uh, yeah. Yeah. I just lost two games. But. The transfer window is here, so forget about that. That never happened. Transfer window arrived. We are four points behind Manchester United. Ouch. I did so bad. I had to use my reserves team because only two days after the West Brom game, we are playing against Chelsea and they are right below us now. Oh my god, I can't believe I did so bad. Obviously, against Crystal Palace, I thought they are at the bottom of the league, so maybe simulating could get us a victory or at least a draw. We lost. West Brom. Ah, let's not talk about it. Let's just not talk about it. The transfer window has arrived. And Peter Cech apparently wants to leave, but a training injury. Who? Ose Tutu. Great. The only right back that we have for our reserve team just got injured for two months, which is great to see. Koscielny, Joe has left. And that means we now have some money to spend. And Petr Cech is asking to leave. Um, uh, did I say Petr Cech is asking to leave or did I say uh, Koscielny has left? I don't know. Koscielny has left. Peter Cech is asking to leave. Here we go. We have 16 million in our budget. Let's adjust things right here. I think we will need around 150k for the wages just to make sure um, for Jimenez. So we have around 12 million to spend. And the transfer window has now come around, boys. Next episode transfer window business hopefully bringing in a new center back into our team immediately and then playing against chelsea who are just three points behind us and hopefully making up for the terrible losses that i just had against crystal palace and west brom Ugh. all right that is it for today i hope you guys enjoyed even though i did terrible towards the end there 
Um, yeah, I'm looking forward to Arsenal Fan TV. Yoo Yay! Come on, Arsenal! Woohoo! Have a great day. Take care. Peace, I guess.